So welcome to the webinar, Dr. Rani's top four strategies for an eye healthy diet. Um, if you don't know me, I'm actually Dr. Rani. My full name is Rudrani Banik, and, uh, and I'll be your host for today. And I plan to have this webinar go for about 30 minutes or so, but depending on on how things go with questions, we may go just a little bit over, maybe another five minutes over. So um, I'd love it if you could stay till the end. If not, I completely understand and I respect your time. So um, so let me go ahead and get started here. Um, now, I do have a little issue with advancing my slides, which is not good. Okay, so, um, so again, my name is Dr. Rani. Um, I'm a, just a little bit of background about me. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist. Um, I'm also a fellowship trained neuro ophthalmologist, and I'm also certified in integrative and functional medicine. So what that means is that I combine the best of both worlds. I, I take traditional ophthalmology and I combine it with a holistic approach based in nutrition, lifestyle, botanicals, et cetera. So I really do think it's the most uh, balanced way to approach eye health. And uh, so I've been working in ophthalmology for over 20 years. And um, I have a private practice in New York City, uh, which is called Envision Health. But I also um, am an associate professor at Mount Sinai School of Medicine here in New York. And that's where I do teaching. I teach residents, fellows, medical students, and I also conduct clinical trials. So I have a nice balance of private practice and academics as well. And, um, and so... Uh, what I, I'm going to make a very bold and ambitious statement here, um, which is that this webinar, um, in the next 30 minutes or so, I really do hope that what I'm going to be sharing with you today will change your life in a very meaningful, deep way. And why do I say that? Well, I think that what I'm going to, the con concepts I'm going to introduce to you about nutrition and its link to eye health will help you make healthier choices when it comes to diet and your eye health. And it will help you to really support your eyes in a way where you can hopefully prevent um, issues down the road. Uh, there are many age-related eye issues that may happen as people get older, uh, ranging from dry eyes to cataracts to glaucoma, macular degeneration. And I do strongly believe, based on my traditional training and also my integrative functional medicine training, that nutrition is the key to maintaining excellent vision and um, and preventing boarding off many of those age-related eye diseases. So again, very bold statement here uh, that uh, I hope again that this is going to be very, very impactful. So, you know, I have a lot of different things that I do. Uh, so, why am I so specifically passionate about nutrition? Well, there's a long backstory to this. It actually has to do with uh, the, uh, the personal health journey that I went through with migraine, and I won't uh, get into that today. That's a story for another day. But basically, um, uh, nutrition is what helped me to really turn my health around and achieve. Um, overall, better wellness and brain health and eye health. And, um, and so based off of my own experience of changing my nutrition, um, I use those principles for many of my patients. And I saw really incredible benefits in many of my patients, um, not just my patients with uh, migraine or other neurologic types of issues like multiple sclerosis or other autoimmune issues, but even people with eye conditions. So again, initially I used a lot of these nutritional principles for my patients with neurologic disease. And then I expanded it to also apply those same principles to people with ocular disease. And I found some really amazing, um, really uh, miraculous, almost uh, life-changing, vision-changing uh, benefits. Uh, for example, people who had, who had really severe refractory dry eye uh, really turned their symptoms around where um, they didn't need to be on immunosuppressant medications anymore, simply based off of changes to their diet. Um, I've seen patients who have advanced forms of diabetic retinopathy, if they've implemented, impl implemented certain nutritional strategies, be able to control their vision issue, and then um, even have some of those changes recede and reverse with diabetic retinopathy. I've seen people with macular degeneration who are on the cusp of converting from dry macular degeneration to vision threatening wet macular degeneration, arrest progression of their disease. So I've seen time and time again, many people with chronic eye issues really turn their vision health around and maintain, protect and preserve their vision simply by using nutrition. So I'm a big believer, I'm a big advocate in the power of healthy nutrition. And so um, so I really do go by the, the um, 
the adage, food is medicine. Um, now you may have heard this before in other aspects of health, but uh, I, I, again, really strongly believe that it's so critical to include the right foods to support your vision health and your brain health because the eye is an extension of the brain. And even though this concept oftentimes of food as medicine gets attributed to Hippocrates, who is considered the grandfather of modern Western medicine, this concept actually goes back thousands of years to ancient cultures, ancient Mesopotamia, ancient India, ancient China. And a lot of those cultures still practice a lot of these principles of using food um, to heal disease, to improve health, so that medications are not necessary. So um, not to say that you can immediately stop your medications if you change your diet, but gradually, you know, I've had patients who are able to get off of certain medications, for example, you know, with certain types of diets, um, I have, I've had patients who maybe ha have also had histories of high blood pressure or diabetes or high cholesterol. By changing their diet, many of them are actually able to get off of some of those uh, chronic blood pressure medications that they're on or their diabetic medications. So um, again, it can be really transformative, this concept of food as medicine. So, um, so because I've, you know, I've had a lot of experience using nutrition, I ended up writing a book uh, which many of you uh, probably have heard me talk about on my social media. Uh, but my book is called Beyond Carrots, Best Foods for Eye Health A to Z. And it is available on Amazon. Um, it's both available in paperback and Kindle. Um, if you scan the QR code, you can go to the, the, um, the, the page where you can purchase the book. Um, but you know, why did I decide to write this book? Well, I wanted to expand my message beyond just my patients to more of the pu public, but also to my colleagues in the eye care world. Because as an ophthalmologist, I have to tell you honestly, I was never properly trained in nutrition. I can remember maybe back in medical school, I had four hours of nutrition training, which really is basically nothing. I mean, I was taught about uh, macronutrients like carbohydrates and proteins and fats, but I was never really taught about the, uh, the many of the other nutrients that are so important for eye health and general health. And, and even during my training and residency in ophthalmology and fellowship, I was never taught nutrition. So this is something that I learned through my functional medicine training, my integrative training. And I really want to get this information out again, both to the public, as well as to my colleagues in ophthalmology and optometry. So I hope some of you on the, on the, web, on the webinar today are actually eye care specialists, because I really do want to share this information so that you then can take this information and go on and share and, and counsel your patients on proper nutrition for eye health. So, um, you know, my book is called Beyond Carrots. So, you know, many people have probably heard this, that carrots are so important to eye, for eye health. So just put it into the chat if you've heard this before, um, that, you know, carrots are the key to eye health. Did you, you know, did your parents tell you this? Eat your carrots and you'll have good eyesight or strong eyes. And I'm just curious. So just put that into the chat if you've heard that before, because certainly I heard it when I was a child. Many of my patients have heard it and many of my patients continue to hear it because I think this is something that kind of gets passed along through the generations that if you just eat your carrots, your vision will be healthy. You don't have to worry about it. So, um, so uh, yes, I'm hearing, I'm getting a couple of answers. Yes, yes, yes. So where did this come from? You know, just a little bit of a quick history lesson here. Where did this, I'm not going to call it a myth because there is some truth to it, but where did this urban concept come from that carrots are the key to eye health? Well, there's actually a really interesting uh, story here, and it actually goes back to World War II. So during World War II, what was happening was that the Germans were bombing England. So they were sending in their fighter planes during the nighttime to, to drop bombs throughout England. But somehow the British had a way to detect those German air you know, uh, uh, bombing planes come, bomber planes come in, and they were able to shoot them down. And so the Germans could not figure out how did the British detect their planes? How were they able to shoot them down and, and you know, prevent them from bombing? And so the British started to spread this urban myth that their pilots were eating lots of carrots. And because they were eating lots of carrots, their vision was strong. They had excellent vision, 2020 or better, and that was helping them detect these planes in the night sky. Well, the truth is that 
they, I don't know whether they were really eating carrots, but the truth is that the British had, had, um, had come up with a new technology, which was radar. So they were using radar to identify those German bomber planes and shoot them down. So it wasn't necessarily the carrots, maybe, you know, it helped a little bit, but it was really the radar. But anyway, that propaganda was spread that carrots are important for night vision, they're important for healthy eyesight. And so basically then, Everyone started eating carrots. Um, farmers started growing carrots, and there was an overabundance of carrots. And basically, everybody carrots were, you know, in every form of a food possible. So carrot soup, carrot cakes, carrot pastries, all kinds of carrots, and there was a surplus. So that's how the myth came about. So what I'll tell you is that. Yes, carrots are important for vision. Without carrots, without the, the nutrient that they provide, well, one of the nutrients they provide is beta carotene, which is a form of vitamin A. And we need vitamin A for healthy eyes. We need vitamin A for our night vision. It's absolutely true. We also need vitamin A for our ocular surface. If we don't have vitamin A in our diets, then we may develop dry eyes. So yes, there is some truth. But what I will tell you is that carrots, are the tip of the iceberg when it comes to healthy nutrition for your vision. And beta carotene is also the tip of the iceberg when it comes to eye nutrition. So um, if you think about the eye, uh, the eye is actually really complex. Um, it's small, it's about the size of a golf ball, but it has many, many parts. Now this this diagram is just labeling, it labels 15 parts of the eye, but in reality, the eye has over 40 different structures and cell types that make up the eye. So each of those cell types requires different nutrients. So the eye is complex and therefore we need complex nutrition to support our eye health. And in my research, when I was preparing you know, for my book, I was doing a lot of research. What I discovered is that we don't just need beta carotene. We don't just need vitamin A. We don't just need things like um, the macular carotenoids, which I talk about in my book. We don't just need omegas. We need over 30 nutrients to support our eye health, to achieve optimal eye health, to support all those 40 structures. Some of these nutrients our bodies can make. Some of these nutrients our bodies cannot make, which means that we need to get it from our diet or from a supplement. Um, and the good news is that these very many parts of the eye, there is a, a lot of duplication in terms of which nutrients they, that those parts need to support um, to fully function well. So there's a lot of duplication there in terms of the nutrient requirements. And also, not only do these 30 plus nutrients help to support your eye health, they're also in, they support your brain health. Again, the eye is a direct extension of the brain. So whatever you do for your eyes, you're also going to impact your brain and support your brain. But also many of these nutrients support your entire body. So you're not just eating for your vision, eating for your sight. When you have these nutrients in your diet, you're actually eating for your entire general neurologic health and body health. So keep that in mind. Now, um, now there are specific foods that provide these 30 plus nutrients. And in my book, I highlight 40 of those foods and I call them therapeutic foods for eye health. The reason why I call them therapeutic foods for eye health is that these foods don't just provide a single nutrient, they actually provide multiple nutrients that are part of those 30 nutrients that our eyes need. These foods are nutrient dense. And, um, and so if you eat a variety of those nutrients, and we're going to be talking about, about that in just a moment, those four strategies, I'm going to lay it all out for you. I'm going to make it very, very simple for you, how to get these 30 plus nutrients from these 40 plus foods into your diet. Um, but the key is you want to have those foods and rotate through those foods. So again, if you want the, the actual scientific basis of you know the past five minutes of what I've explained to you, everything is in my book. I explain what those 30 nutrients are. I go through in the best foods for eye health A to Z, what those 40 plus foods are. So um, I'm not gonna get into the, into the nitty gritty of all the science today because I wanna give you practical, four practical actionable tips that will help you get proper and complete eye nutrition. So, um, so again, please, if you're interested, take a look at my book and I will, um, and later on, I will share that again, the QR code and the name of my, of the book. So just, um, let's, let's first go through what the strategies are. So, um, so these four strategies, um, what I want to do is I'm going to go over them. Um, I will just first name what it is, and then I'll go into how to implement the strategy. And um, also I thought to make it a little bit interesting, I actually created a little bit of a poll here and I'm gonna try this. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I'm gonna try it 
um, because I would like this to be a little bit of uh, interactive. So I'm going to launch this poll here um, and see if we can just give me one moment. Okay, it may not actually work. Um, so unfortunately, it's not working today. So um, let me go ahead and close that out. I really apologize. I was hoping to do a little poll, like a pre-webinar, post-webinar. But anyway, I'm just going to ask you. About, you can answer into the chat because we can't do the poll part. Um, how many cups of, um, of fruits and vegetables do you think one should eat in a day to support their eye health? So put it into the chat. How many cups? A cup is approximately eight ounces. So is it one to two cups, three to four cups, five cups, more than five cups? How many cups do you really think is necessary to provide your eyes with the nutrition that they need? So um, I have some people saying four to five, eight, four, six, nine to 12. Wow, that's amazing. Nine to 12, um, two, one to four. So I'm getting a slightly, you know, a range here. Um, and so in my first strategy, I'm going to answer that question for you. Now, the second poll question was, um, uh, Okay, so some, yeah, depending on your size and body type, exactly. Um, so the second poll question was, um, do you need to take a probiotic? Now, I know many people take a probiotic supplement, but my question is, do you think you need to take a probiotic supplement? Um, just answer into the chat, yes or no? Maybe, yes or no, maybe. So I think we're getting kind of a split here. Uh, there are some no's, there's some yeses. Okay, then we have eat probiotic foods and fiber from L. Crooker. So excellent. Great depends. Excellent. So okay. So so I'm just gonna go ahead and go on with the talk because unfortunately we couldn't do the poll and I couldn't show you the results, but um, I'm gonna answer those questions for you. So okay, strategy number one for nutrition for your eyes. Number one, eat a plant-rich diet. Now, notice I'm not saying eat a plant-based diet. I'm not saying that you have to be vegan. I'm not saying that you have to be vegetarian. But what I'm saying is you must include many plants in your diet. And the reason is because, and I explained this in my book, all of these plants that we can eat, and I'll show you what they are. So these plants include vegetables. They include fruits. They include nuts. They include seeds, as well as legumes as well as healthy oils. If you have all of these types of foods in your diet, you will get many of those 30 plus nutrients just by eating these foods. So that's why it's so, so important to eat a plant rich diet. Now, um, in terms of the number, how many cups do you need? What I typically recommend to my patients, and this is what I strive to do myself. You know, it's always a, a work in progress, striving to do this. But, um, but I would say have at least five cups of plants a day, and not just the same food or you know or food uh, a plant every single day. You want to rotate through them. So, um, so when I first say this to many of my patients, they're kind of taken aback, like, oh my goodness how can I possibly get in five cups a day? That's just too much food. I don't eat that much. Or, you know, I have a, a salad as a side with my pasta or with my sandwich or my burger. I, I just can't even imagine getting five cups in a day. Well, I will give you a very simple way to get those five cups in your diet. And this is something I really strongly, strongly recommend for anyone who wants to try to protect and preserve their eye health. And this is to simply have a daily smoothie. So what I recommend is you take leafy greens. So five, you know, to achieve that five cups, take about three cups of your favorite leafy green, whatever it is, spinach, kale, asparagus, um, even celery counts. Um, put it into a blender or a, a mixer, whatever you have, add in some berries. So three cups of, let's say leafy greens, a cup of berries, and then maybe you can add in some seeds, you can add in some chia seeds, hemp seeds, flax seeds, and then whatever else you wanna put in there, you can add in some protein powder or some nut butter, whatever helps to raise, to boost that, um, that nutrient density of your food, mix it up and there you go. Within, um, you know, let's say a 12 ounce smoothie, you're getting in about at least four to five cups of 
plants right there. So you can do this in breakfast or you can do it as a snack or you can do it with your lunch. Um, it's very, very easy to get in those five cups. So just put into the chat, how many of you actually have a smoothie you know, on a regular basis? Maybe not every day, but on a regular basis. Um, because I, I find that this is, again, one of the most effective ways to get that five cups of diverse plants into your diet. Yeah, so that's great. Many of you are saying, yes, I, mean, I love smoothies. Yes, Monica, me too. I love smoothies. So now let's move on to strategy number two. Strategy number two, and you may have heard this before, is to eat the rainbow. What you want to do is, as you're eating those plants, you want to make sure that you're eating a diversity of plants and also a diversity of colors. Now, as you can see in this beautiful picture, you see the full range here of the different colors of the rainbow. So this is what you want to strive to achieve is to have the diversity in your diet. And when I say eat the rainbow, this is not what I'm talking about. I am not talking about having colorful candies like Skittles or M&Ms. This is not what I'm talking about. Even some children, though some children would love to call this eating the rainbow. But when I mean eat the rainbow, I mean you need to have um, various shades of green. So not just the same leafy green every single day. You wanna have different shades of green. You wanna have different shades of yellow and orange and red. You also wanna have the darker colors because those deep pigments are gonna provide you with those nutrients, those 30 plus nutrients or some of those 30 plus nutrients that I described earlier. So you wanna have darker colors like blues, purples, even blacks in your diet. And yes, you can even have some whites, even though it's not officially uh, part of the rainbow, um, it's the confluence of all the colors of the rainbow, rainbow but um, you wanna have that diversity. So again, go back to strategy number one, which is eat a plant-rich diet with at least five cups a day, but also you want to diversify it. So I'll just give you a story. So I have um, a patient whom I told, okay, you need to eat the rainbow, have a smoothie. So she was having the same exact spinach smoothie every single day. Uh, spinach with, you know, some uh, blueberries mixed in. And sometimes she would add a banana to that. And I told her, I said, you know, it's wonderful that you've made that change in your diet, that you've incorporated that smoothie. Uh, but you also want to diversify that smoothie. Don't just have the same thing every day. Because yes, you're getting those nutrients, but you want that diversity of nutrients. So um, the other thing in terms of eating the rainbow, and this is a, a, a actually a little fun challenge that I oftentimes tell my patients, maybe they can do in a week's time, or maybe with their family, they can do it kind of as a, as a group family challenge, is to try to strive to have 21 colors during the week, different colors during the week in your diet. You know, why 21? Well, I chose that number because most people eat three meals a day, seven days a week. So that's 21 meals a week. So what I tell my patients is with each meal, try to include a different color. Yes, a different color, different shades of red, different shades of green, different shades of blue or purple. And again, each different shade you're including in your diet are going to supply you with different types of plant-based nutrients. These are called bioflavonoids or polyphenols. And these um, particularly uh, found in these colorful fruits and vegetables are going to support your eye health. Now, you know, when I explain these principles, you know, these four principles that I'm going through, this is very uh, kind of a 30,000 foot view because I want to give you the overall structure for what you need to include in your diet for your uh, optimal nutrition. Um, again, if you want to get into the weeds, if you want to get into the details, please, please, please go back and read my book, uh, or you don't have to read my book. You can look at the pictures because it's a very um, uh, vivid book. And so if you just look through the pictures, you'll get a sense of the di different types of foods you need to eat to get all of those uh, nutrients in your nutrition. So moving on to strategy number three. Um, strategy number three is to avoid sad foods. Now, who here knows what SAD stands for? I'm sure some of you do, because I talk about this a lot in my social media and my videos. Um, yes, Monica, I'm sure you know what a SAD diet is. So Diane, yep, you said it. So Diane mentioned SAD stands for Standard American Diet, S-A-D. So what is the Standard American Diet? Well, it's a typical Western diet that unfortunately is not healthy because it relies heavily on three different types of foods. Um, I'm not going to call them nutrients, but different categories of foods. Uh, number one, unhealthy fats, meaning high 
levels of uh, omega-6 fats, which are considered the pro-inflammatory type of omega. There are different types of omegas. Unfortunately, I don't have the time during today's webinar to go into the details about the different types of omegas, but most of you probably heard of omega-3s. Omega-6s are the, again, the considered to be the pro-inflammatory types of omegas. Also unhealthy fats include saturated fats and trans fats, which are really not natural at all. Trans fats, they're kind of synthetic types of fats. Um, also the SAD diet tends to include a lot of processed and ultra processed foods, uh, packaged foods that have a lot of preservatives, a lot of um, dyes and other types of ingredients in, in them. And then also the SAD diet tends to include uh, refined carbohydrates. So what do I mean by refined carbohydrates? Well, what I mean are um, types of carbohydrates that have been stripped of their nutrients. For example, white bread, white rice, white sugar. These are all carbohydrates, different types of carbohydrates, but they're white because they have been processed. And in the processing of these foods, and I'm going to call them foods here, of these foods, um, a lot of the nutrition has been taken away. So rather than to eat a sad diet, strategy number three, again, is to switch from a sad diet to a, I don't have a, a nice acronym for this one, but, but a healthier alternative diet, which means if you have a diet that's really rich in omega-6 fatty acids, you wanna increase your omega-3 fats. And there, again, there are very specific foods that are high in omega-3 fats. I talk about them in my book. Um, so please go back and reference that. Also, you want to include more healthy fats and oils in your diet. Um, instead of the ultra processed foods, you want to include uh, definitely unprocessed foods, but sometimes even eat raw, whole foods, natural foods as they were meant from nature. So um, you want, we want to include some of that in your diet. You also get the benefit of if you're eating raw foods, especially raw fruits and veggies, you're getting all the great fiber that comes along with it. Um, I know a lot of people like to juice, but uh, you know, I would actually prefer doing the smoothie rather than juicing because when you juice, you take out a lot, you have the nutrients, but you take out the fiber, which is so, so important. So consider doing the smoothie rather than the juice. <laughs> and then finally, a saddle, another last sad alternative I'm gonna mention here is instead of refined carbohydrates, choose whole grains, uh, whether it's whole grain bread, whole grain pasta, um, and or brown rice, um, hopefully low arsenic brown rice, and also choose natural sugar alternatives rather than uh, processed white sugar. Um, so uh, now let's move on to finally strategy number four. And I'm almost at 30 minutes. So I really, really apologize if you could just stay with me another few minutes. I was trying to keep this within half an hour, but I always love, you know, I love to share as much as I can. And I always end up going over on my webinar. So please, if you have to go, I understand. But if you can, please stay another five minutes or so. And I promise then I'll wrap up. Uh, strategy number four is to support a healthy gut microbiome. So you may have heard of the microbiome. The human microbiome consists of organisms that li live inside of us and on us. And these organisms include bacteria, viruses, fungi, sometimes even some protozoa, they live within us, in our gut, in our um, uh, uh, nasal cavity, in our mouth, in our, um, on our skin. Uh, they're even found um, in, our, um, uh, in our eye. They're actually not in our eye. On the surface of our eye, there's actually a microbiome. And there's also believed to be a human microbiome in the brain. So there's different types of uh, organisms that live in different places in the body, but the gut microbiome is perhaps the most studied of all the various microbiomes. Um, it's estimated that we have about 40 trillion organisms that live inside of our gut. And these organisms are really critical for our survival. They live symbiotically with us. They help us to uh, protect against uh, bad bacteria or pathogenic bacteria. The gut microbiome also helps us to synthesize certain vitamins, including vitamin B12 and vitamin K. The gut our microbiome is essential in our immune response. It helps to kind of prime our immune system against certain things, um, uh, um, toxins or pathogens. Um, and also the gut microbiome is almost like our second brain. It actually helps to synthesize neurotransmitters, which are chemicals that interact with nerves. So there's a lot that the gut microbiome does. So what does this have to do with the eye? You know, what is this link between the gut and the eye? And what I'll tell you is that the research is still in its earliest stages, but we know that when the gut microbiome is not healthy, that there are potential ocular diseases that may develop. And so again, this research is very new. 
it's very much so in its infancy, but we know that the gut microbiome when it's not healthy is linked to things, eye conditions like dry eye, like macular degeneration, uveitis, and glaucoma. So those are the ones that have been studied or they're just beginning to be studied. But I think probably in the next five to 10 years, we'll much better understand how exactly the gut microbiome and what we call gut dysbiosis, when there's too much bad bacteria rather than good bacteria, how that can impact our eye health. But my strategy, the strategy is the fourth strategy is that you need to support a healthy gut microbiome. How are you gonna do that? Well, number one, you want to include probiotics in your diet. It's best to get live probiotics. And then if you feel like you need to, you can always supplement with a probiotic supplement. And not only probiotics, you also need to include prebiotics in your diet. So what are prebiotics? Prebiotics are foods that the gut bacteria live off of. They feed on this and they actually thrive on some of these prebiotic types of foods. So um, I'm just going to know, again, I apologize. I'm over by a few minutes, but I'm just going to really quickly share with you what some probiotics are. Um, so basically anything fermented, uh, whether it's um, kimchi or sauerkraut or certain types of cheeses, uh, yogurt, um, even vegan types of yogurt and cheeses are fermented, um, tempeh, um, natto. These are some kombucha, which is a, a fermented tea. These are all fermented foods that have live cultures within them, live bacterial cultures. I always think it's best to have live cultures rather than to take a supplement. Um, now you can make your own probiotics at home. Uh, basically very simple. You actually just have to um, take some of these uh, beautifully colored fruits or veggies, or not veggies, um, sorry, not fruits, veggies, and you can put them in a jar and um, put them in a dark place and then they will ferment on their own after several days. And then they are your homemade probiotics right there. In terms of prebiotics, these are just a, a few of the many, many foods that are prebiotics. So you need to include prebiotics in your diet at least several times a week, if not every day. The probiotics definitely should have every day, but the prebiotics also try to include some of these foods in your diet to support your gut microbiome, which in turn will help keep your gut microbiome healthy, which in turn will keep your eyes healthy. Now, again, this is an overview that I've provided of these four strategies. So, um, so again, to recap the four strategies, number one, eat a plant-rich diet. It doesn't matter whether you're an omnivore, whether you're a vegan or vegetarian, it doesn't matter. A plant-rich diet is the key to eye health. Um, number two, eat the rainbow. Make sure you're getting the diversity of colors. Remember that rule of 21. So which eat with each meal, try to include a different color. Avoid sad foods. Again, processed foods, um, unhealthy fats and refined carbohydrates. And then finally, support a healthy gut microbiome by including uh, probiotics and prebiotic foods in your diet. So um, now a lot of people oftentimes ask me, you know, Dr. Rani, what should I be eating? You know, I have a history of dry eye or I have macular degeneration or, um, you know, I'm at risk because a family member has it. Well, I've created an online tool which is called the Nutrition IQ Test. Just as though, you know, you may take an IQ test for intelligence, this is an IQ test that will help guide you in terms of which nutrients and which foods should you be eating. So this Nutrition IQ Test is available online. Um, it's just a few simple questions. It takes, I think, no more than five minutes to do. And if you just scan the QR code, it will take you to the Nutrition IQ Test. You answer the questions about your uh, medical history, your eye history, your family history, and a couple of other questions about any symptoms that you may be having. And then the results will be personalized. It will tell you which category of foods you need to focus on. So there's a code there. And again, just in the interest of time, I can't go through exactly what the code, you know, what everything stands for, but the code are, is C-O-L-R and it stands for different parts of the eye. And based off of which code you get, you will be directed towards certain foods that you can find in my book, Beyond Carrot. So it's kind of all integrated, the Nutrition IQ test, with uh, my book. And, um, and that will, I think, guide you if you have, a, you know, again, a specific family history of something, of an eye condition, or if you've been diagnosed with something, or if you have symptoms 
suggesting that there is an eye condition going on. So with that, um, again, sorry, I couldn't do the poll. So I hope that um, that uh, you know this brief presentation has answered some of those questions. Again, just to review, um, you're going to eat a plant-rich diet at least five cups a day. And in terms of the, um, the probiotic question, do you need to take a probiotic supplement? Not necessarily. If you're including plenty of live probiotics in your diet, you don't necessarily need to take a probiotic supplement to support your gut health. So finally, I just want to end, um, and then maybe I'll take one or two questions if people want to stay on a little bit longer. Um, I'm really grateful because my book, it came out about a month ago, and it's hit the number one uh, um, uh, place in ophthalmology on Amazon. So I'm really, really, really thankful to anyone who supported me in purchasing the book. The QR code is there if you want to buy the book. It comes in both paperback as well as Kindle. Um, if you have a Kindle Unlimited account, it's actually free um, if you have Kindle Unlimited. And for now, um, until May 31st, it's on sale on Amazon. So I would suggest getting it at a, a discounted price. After May 31st, the price is going to go up to, I believe um, Amazon is increasing all of their prices. I believe it's going to go up to about $28. So you can get a $10 or $9 and change discount if you get it before May 31st. Um, and also... If you know if any friends or family who are um, you know, concerned about their vision, maybe they've had an eye issue like dry eye or cataracts or glaucoma or macular degeneration, please, uh, I would really appreciate it if you shared this book with them because I think that, again, the strategies that I've talked about today are, are kind of the overarching principles, but the book gets into the nitty gritty details of what you can do to protect your eyes from a nutritional standpoint. Um, and um, so um, I am gonna offer a free gift uh, for anyone who gets the book and is kind enough to write me a review on Amazon, if you write an honest review, um, I'm not telling you what you have to say or how many stars you have to give me, but if you write an honest review, if you just take a screenshot of that, send it to uh, my office at the email below, info at rudranibanikmd.com, we will gift you uh, the Beyond Carrots Toolkit for free. And what this is, is basically it's a digital resource or it's a set of resources um, that um, helps you implement the strategies in the book Beyond Carrots. So basically I have a meal planner. So a two week meal planner outlining the types of foods you should be eating and to get that diversity in your diet. So um, along with the meal planner, there's a recipe guide that includes all of the recipes that were in the meal planner. There's also a shopping guide and there's also a supplement. So there's some extra foods that included in the Beyond Carrots supplement or best foods for eye health supplement. So this um, toolkit is all digital. It's a PDF version. Um, it is available through my website uh, for purchase, $24.99. But if you do, or if you're kind enough to write me a review, review on Amazon, then uh, we will send it to you for free. We'll give you free access. Um, and also, um, I just want to mention that um, I want to get this information out there to as many people as possible. So um, yes, I know that I, I hit the number one in my category, but I want to kind of expand to reach more and more people. So I want to also get to other categories of books on Amazon. And the only way I can do that to boost the algorithm in Amazon is to have more and more reviews. So I'm looking to get at least 50 reviews uh, for my books. So I would really, really appreciate it if you would be kind enough to do that. And then with that, I'm going to close and I'll take a couple of questions. Um, I am very active on social media. So if you're on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube, you can find me there. The links are there. My website is there as well. Or if you have any questions, um, please feel free to email me and my team. We're happy to um, try to answer any questions. Now, if you have a specific diagnosis and you're looking for specific guidance, that unfortunately I can't help you with because unless you're a patient of mine, I cannot give you personal medical advice, but I can guide you in the right direction. Or if you're looking for um, you know, help in a particular area, I can guide you in the right direction, even if I may not be able to answer your specific question myself. So with that, um, I will, um, I will uh, answer some of the questions that were um, sent in here. So uh, actually, I had a couple of questions that were sent in before the webinar. So let me go ahead and answer those first. So one question came in about macular degeneration. So um, someone, and I, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, but someone had written, you know, I've been diagnosed with an early stage of macular degeneration. What can I do from a nutritional standpoint to support my eyes and not pro uh, progress in macular degeneration? So 
I would say start off with the strategies I mentioned, um, you know, the plant rich diet, eating that diversity, supporting your gut microbiome, avoiding sad foods, because sad foods have actually been shown to increase one's risk, double one's risk of developing uh, progressive macular degeneration. But in addition to that, there are specific nutrients that are important for macular degeneration. And those nutrients are the class of macular carotenoids. And these include carotenoids, which are cousins to beta, uh, beta carotene, cousins to vitamin A. They're specific to the retina and they're called lutein, zeaxanthin, and mesozeaxanthin. And it's all in my book. So I apologize for throwing out those big terms right now at the end, but I just wanted to let you know that everything's in the book. Uh, macular carotenoids are what you want to focus on. So you want to eat foods that are rich in those macular carotenoids. And in the book, I kind of outline how much of those foods you need to eat and which specific foods they are, but they're found in many different types of foods, mainly leafy greens of all kinds, but also peppers like orange and yellow peppers. Um, if you eat eggs, they're very rich in egg yolk, those carotenoids. So if you're at risk for macular degeneration, or if you've been diagnosed with an early stage of macular degeneration, please, please, please try to include macular carotenoids in your diet and boost your levels of macular carotenoids. Okay, now the next question I, um, I got about nutrition was, um, I think I eat a pretty healthy diet. Um, do I need to take an eye health supplement? So this is a great question because um, I think the market for eye health supplements has just exploded in the past, I would say five years or so. Um, and there are so many different manufacturers of eye health supplements now on the market. What I'll tell you is that each of those manufacturers has their own formulation. And what you want to look for in an eye health supplement is, first of all, I do think that, yes, we all need to take an eye health supplement. I should backtrack and answer that first. Um, even though you may have a very, very healthy diet, my belief, and I explain why I have this belief in my book, um, because I have a chapter on supplements, my belief is that Yes, we should all be taking an eye health supplement because the stresses that our eyes are under these days um, can really, uh, really cause a lot of eye strain, eye fatigue, light sensitivity. And if you um, eat well, that's important. But if you take the supplement uh, with nutrients that will help support your eyes, you're less likely to suffer from things like eye strain and eye fatigue. And this has actually been shown in uh, two clinical trials that people who actually took eye health supplements had reduced levels of eye strain and eye fatigue and light sensitivity. So, um, so to answer your question, yes, I do think that you should be taking an eye health supplement. And, you know, the, the topic of eye health supplements is so broad. There's just so much to it. I'm actually considering doing another webinar in the future, just focusing on that because I, I can't answer it in, you know, quick one or two minute answer in terms of, you know, what are you looking, what should you be looking for in an eye health supplement? So um, you can go back to my book. It's chapter four in my book, but also I think probably in a couple of weeks, maybe in about two weeks or so, I'll probably be doing another um, webinar uh, to talk about that and answer your questions about that. You know, which supplement should you take for macular degeneration? What about for dry eyes? There are different supplement you should be taking, or what about for glaucoma? Are there specific supplements that may benefit glaucoma? So I'll be able to answer all of those questions, really go more in depth than what I can do today. So thank you for that question. Um, okay. So, um, I have a question from Diane. What kind of glasses do you recommend for evening, um, on the computer? So, um, so that's a great question about blue blocking glasses. Um, similar to eye health supplements, there's a lot of, um, uh, manufacturers now of blue blocking glasses. And again, that, that, um, you know, product market has just exploded, especially, you know, in the past five to 10 years or so. And what I'll tell you is that not all blue blockers are made the same. Um, there are many differences in how they're manufactured. Some are simply a reflective coating on the surface of the lens that basically bounces off blue light. Um, other blue blockers actually have a tint to them. So there's a, actually um, a filter inside the lens that is actually filtering out certain wavelengths of light. Now, um, I could go on and on and on about blue blocking glasses, but what I'll tell you is that I strongly believe that if you have the macular carotenoids in your diet or sufficient amounts of the macular carotenoids in your diet, again, lutein and zeaxanthin, those are the macular carotenoids that you can protect your eyes enough that you may not need those blue blocking glasses. Um, so if you have severe eye strain, maybe you can get the blue blocking glasses, but I would first say support your eye health using nutrition. That should be the foundation. And then if you still have symptoms, if you're still worried, if you're still having issues, um, then maybe consider getting a blue blocker. 
And that could, again, also be a whole entire webinar in itself, because there's a lot to really tease apart and get into the weeds about. And unfortunately, I don't have the time today. So thank you for the question. And I hope I answered it. Always turn to nutrition first and get those macular carotenoids in your diet. So um, I think that uh, with that, um, again, I know I've gone over and now we're at, oh my goodness, 47 minutes past the hour. So I don't want to take up any more of your time, but thank you so much for joining. And I really appreciate your time. I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, uh, the replay link will be sent to you um, by tomorrow. So if you want to go back, rewatch any of this, maybe take some notes, share it with friends and family, feel free to do that. And also please, please, please consider getting my book and um, submitting a review. I'd really, really appreciate that. Um, so with that, I think I will close today's webinar. And thank you so much. I appreciate your taking the time and I hope this has been helpful.